Zero accounting software bill form. Get ready to be an office hero with zero. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our personal Zero home page. Gonna scroll in just a bit by holding down control, scrolling up on the mouse wheel, currently at 175% scrolling, then opening the demo company, selecting the demo company to do so. We will open the major two financial statement reports in new tabs as we do every time. Right click in the tab up top, duplicating it. I'm going to duplicate that tab again, right click up top and duplicate again. And then I'm going to go to the middle tab. It having been done thinking, accounting drop down, reports, and I'll open the balance sheet, which will be in the favorites because everybody should have a balance sheet and their favorite reports. Next tab to the right, we're going to go into the accounting again, reports again. This time, however, we want the income statement, the profit and loss, the P and the L. I'm going to go back to the balance sheet, change the date to a custom date down below. We want to have 2023 for this presentation, and I'll say the 31st. That looks good. Update the report. Okay, so now we're focused in on the bill form. The bill form will be increasing the accounts payable account so the account related to it will be the payable i'm going to go back to the first tab to consider entering the bill form in more detail let's first just look at the flow in our mind of the bill form if i look at a flow chart it would look something like this we're going to enter a bill the bill will increase the accounts payable and the other side will then go to some generally expense account although it could go to like a fixed asset or something like that. And then of course we'll pay the bill with in essence a check type form, a form that will be decreasing the checking account and decreasing the payable. We're gonna do that and that will be an accrual process. Entering a bill is an accrual form as opposed to a cash-based accounting system form. If we were on a cash-based system, we would just get the bill from the vendor or supplier and just write a check or make a payment directly on it. So just note the terminology here. The bill for our system, for our accounting system, will typically mean that we're entering something into the system that is a form that will increase in the accounts payable. In normal kind of language, the bill could mean either side of the table. You might say that you're bill billing your customers, meaning you're charging them, or you might say that you've received a bill. But within QuickBooks, the bill form, when I enter it specifically means that at the end of the day, we're paying for goods and supplies as opposed to us billing the customers, which would actually be an invoice. The invoice represents us billing the customers. The bill means we're entering the bill. Not only that, but when we receive the bill from a supplier, it doesn't mean that we're gonna enter it as a bill form because we might pay off the bill that we received in terms of a paper or PDF bill by just writing a check or doing an electronic kind of transfer, just decreasing the checking account. The bill form specifically means that we're increasing the accounts payable and that then we're gonna write the check or pay it off with a check form later, tracking the accrual account as opposed to a cash-based account of accounts payable. And then we also could have the bill entered wind with some more complexity with the inventory where we might have a purchase order that then we're going to receive on it the inventory and then link the bill to the purchase order we'll talk about that more off more when we get to the purchase order type of stuff so let's go back on in then and see our items if i hit the drop down you can see you have the bill here so if we're paying somebody for goods and services we could send them just uh, spend money, right? A decrease to the checking account. 
which might be a check or it might be us uh, entering an electronic transfer or this might be a form generated from the bank feeds if we're using bank feeds to record a cash-based system. But an accrual-based system would mean that we're entering the bill here. So let's take a look at an actual bill. Let's open one up and open the bill. And let's say the bill, let's just make up of a vendor or supplier as we go. I'm just going to call it an AAA and say it's a new contact. So we made up the contact as we go. And the date is uh, November 30th. I'll just keep that as the date. The, uh, the due date. Now the due date on the bill is different from the date it was entered. I'm going to scroll in just a little bit. So the, the date that we entered the, into the system is the date of the transaction. So note that if you're talking about something like a utility bill, then you might uh, first consume the utilities and then the utility company determines what you consumed and bills you on it. Then you receive the physical bill, which you could either just pay electronically at that point with a check so that you don't ever enter the bill into the system as a bill, but just pay off the physical bill with a check or you enter it into the system as a bill. If you enter it into the system as a bill, this is going to be the date that you typically enter it in the transaction date, which is going to be the date that it's recorded as an expense on, on your financial statements. And then you've got uh, the due date, which is going to be the date that you have to pay the actual bill. So that's what we're going to need to track and then pay at a future point. A reference number, if applicable, if we have a file that we need to upload, we've got upload your files to store them alongside. So we can have that kind of as the backup information. And then the total that we're going to pay, let's just say it's $100. And then it's going to be paid in USD, the currency. And so we could got the option depending on the capacities of the software you're using to have different currencies if you're dealing with uh, transactions in different currencies, which greatly complicates things. But uh, you have possibly the capacity to do that, which is nice. So the uh, amounts are no tax. So you've got the option of tax exclusive, tax inclusive, no tax. I'm going to say no tax here. And then we have the items down below. Now, the items are really going to be applicable if we're purchasing, say, inventory items, because the item is going to drive the the accounting of not only the accounts that are going to be impacted from this financial transaction but tracking the subsidiary stuff we'll get more into inventory in a future presentation but uh, if you're using a perpetual inventory system you've got to set up those items as a foundational uh, thing then you've got the description the quantity the unit price now if we don't really have the items but we're paying for something like the utility bill then we can just assign the account over here so we can assign it to an account. I'm going to make up another account just for now. Obviously, if this is a transaction that we did in the past, we would want to be using the same account that we're going to be applying it to. I'm going to add a new account here just so we can see it so we can find it in our financial statements and to show that we can add a general a ledger account as we go. Now, it's useful to kind of see where the numbers are at here. So I'm going to try to lie this at the bottom. So I'll make it like 850 on the number. So I'm going to say, okay, 850 new account. It's typically going to be an expense type of account on a bill. Not always, but typically I'll make it 850, uh, 8050. The short name is going to be example. It's going to be an example expense expense account expense account just for a generic name i'm going to put that as the description tax on purchase i'm going to say that there's no tax so tax on purchase is zero and so there we have it so let's save it boom so we've got that account and then the region if applicable we won't get into the regions here i'm just going to say the amount then is going to be the 100 dollars and I put the amount here one and then the $100. So then we have the total. So what will this be doing then? It's going to be increasing the accounts payable. It's going to increase then the expense account that we set up, set up the expense account. And it's always also going to be tracking the outstanding bill for the new vendor or supplier of AAA that we set up here. So let's go ahead and well, before we save it, let's just note that you could add uh, another line so we might have multiple lines here and if we run out of lines then of course we can possibly add lines 
we have uh, add five lines, 10 lines at a time. Assign expenses to a customer. So if you select this item, you can assign the expense to a customer. Why would you do that? Well, possibly if you're paying for something and you want to include it on say an invoice that you're gonna turn around and create your invoice from it, oftentimes used in a job cost system, then you might uh, use that kind of option as well. Now, most of the time, small companies will be just say, just go to the approve item here. But if you have a more complex structure set up, you might save it as a draft. You might uh, save continue editing. You might save and submit for approval and save and add, uh, save and add another. So if you save it as a draft, let's say, let's go into save as a draft. And then I'm going to go into that will not have an impact on the financial statements yet because it was saved as a draft. So now we can see here that we have the one draft for AAA. If I go to the business dropdown, for example, and we go into the pay bills item, this is another area that we can sort uh, sort the bills. So we go into here and say, I would just like to look at the drafts. So I'm gonna say instead of all, I just wanna see the drafts. And so there's our draft. We also might find that by going to the actual supplier contacts drop down and then going into the suppliers and within the suppliers. Now we've set up the AAA, which we put right on top there, which is nice and easy uh, to find. And then we could scroll down here and we've got our bill down here. So there it is there. So now let's edit that. I'm going to go into it and say, let's go and view the bill so that'll take us back into the bill in this format and now let's say if we saved it from a draft and we said save and continue save and submit for approval so let's do that save and submit for approval and now i sort my bills if i go into my drop down and i go into my my uh, pay bills area i'm in i'm in all i hit the drop down there's no more in drafts now we've got the one awaiting for approval so i can go into that item here's the item waiting for approval i could check them off and approve them this way so that's another way we could do it let's go ahead and approve it and so it's going to say you selected one item to approve are you sure i'm going to say approve and now it's been moved uh, from the approval process and now we've got the awaiting payment so once it's been approved that means you've actually kind of recorded the bill at that point in time. It still hasn't been paid, but now we're sorting and tracking for the payment. So we've recorded a financial transaction when we have approved the bill. So if I go back up top then and go to my, my uh, liabilities, you might need to refresh the screen. So you might update it as you go in here and then go back down and say, hopefully that bill will be reflected in the accounts payable. So if I go into the accounts payable, and check it out then scrolling down we've got the the bills all the way at the bottom of course because it was uh, in november so now we've got the the payable invoice again that name is a little bit confusing to me i would think they'd call it like a bill or something but because again we're using the terminology of an invoice or a bill but as long as you know which side of the table you're on i'm in the i'm in the accounts payable therefore the invoice to me means here that i'm going to be i received basically an invoice from the from the supplier it's a bill it's entering accounts payable that's the type of form i can see the other side is going to the expense account which is nice here as well i can drill back down into the source document so if i go into this then it's going to go into that item so it's it's viewing the bill now so here's the actual uh, bill information, the 100 price, the example expense account, and uh, the tax exempt. And then, of course, we've got the pay bill information on down below. So I'm going to go back then to the detail in the accounts payable. Go back again to the detail again. Now, remember, the accounts payable represents us. It's an accrual account representing the fact that we owe vendors or suppliers money the backup detail related to it we can see as we saw over here sorted by the by the the amounts here for the balance the i'm sorry the business information into the bills to pay so we could sort them in this fashion we can also sort them by going to the contacts 
and go into the suppliers within the contacts and there's going to be our AAA contact. If I go into that, we've got our information there. We have one bill awaiting payment uh, in that format. Then also we have subsidiary reports, which should tie it out, which should give us a total. So if I go to the last tab over here, I'm going to right click on that tab. I'm going to duplicate this tab. And let's take a look at the subsidiary report in the accounting dropdown reports. And if we say we're going to break out that detail, I'm going to scroll down to the payables to yeah the payables and receivables here. And we've got the age payable detail. Let's go into that age payable detail. And this report will give us a little bit more information breaking out how past due things are. Let's make this as of a custom date year end December, December 31st update it so now we've got this information here it is it's 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 a uh, 1 to 30 if i scroll down to the bottom and we get to the total note the total 10391.84 should tie out to what's on the balance sheet at the 10391.84 so note if i if i just drill down on this it gives us the transactions by date they were entered but i also want to see the transactions by who we owe the money to and this report over here gives us a little bit more detail because it tells us how old the reports, how old the past due the items are. But it also ties out to this number. In practice, when you're dealing with paying the bills, most likely you'll be working with these items here in the drop down dashboard, the pay bills item here, and with the contacts with the suppliers. These two items don't give you that nice total that ties into the balance sheet. But you want to understand that's what's happening here. You're looking at the balance sheet is tracking the accounts payable. The accounts payable is being supported by who you owe the money to, which is in essence a subsidiary ledger report, which should tie out to the same balance by who, who you owe the money to, which in practice, you're going to tie everything together with the two formats of the pay bill item and the supplier's item here. Now, obviously, the next step in the flow would be for us to pay the bill. And so we'll do that. We'll see a paying of the bill, you know, and we'll focus on that transaction in a, a future presentation. But if I go back to the balance sheet, that form will clearly decrease the, the accounts payable and then decrease the checking account. In this case, increase the overdrafted checking account, which is why it's over here in uh, the liabilities and not in an asset. So just note that the other side of the bill form went here into the expenses where we put that that new expense. Let's refresh it. I need to update update the form, scrolling down, and then we have the example expense. So there's the hundred dollars. If I drill down on it, it can take us back to the source document. That's the beauty of of an accounting system of zero because then we can drill back down, we can drill back down to the source. Again, I would think it would be called a bill form. It's called an invoice, payable invoice. Okay, same thing, you know, so just get used to the terminology. Drill back down onto that, and it takes you to the bill that we have entered into place. I can go back then to the uh, form or to the, G to the GL and back here to the expense. So note that the expense has been entered on an accrual basis when we entered the form, not when we paid the bill. We didn't actually pay the cash. We're going to pay the cash in the future when the bill becomes due, and we'll see that in a future presentation.